Hey, it's Mark with The Thoughtful Gamer, and I'm here with a quick top five list. Today I'm going to be talking about my top five biggest upside games. Before I get into what that means, just a quick reminder to subscribe. I'm almost to 500 subscribers on this channel. I'd love to get there really soon. So what do I mean by biggest upside games? What I mean is these are games that I've played once or twice that I'm not quite sure about, but I think could be really, really good, like top 30 of all time good. But I need to play them more. So these are the games that have the potential to rise in my estimation the most. So with that said, let's get into the first one. These are not in any uh, particular, actually they're in alphabetical order, uh, but not in any kind of ranked order. So the first one is 1817. If you are familiar with 18xx games, you know that 1817 is a beast. It is extremely complex, mostly through the addition of short selling, which I don't believe is in any other 18xx games other than the ones that are kind of spinoffs of 1817. And there's a number of other factors. There's not very many fixed positions on the board. There's just a whole lot of financial freedom to do all kinds of crazy things. I managed to play this, I believe, once, maybe twice online. And it was to the point where I'm like, well, I'm either going to, if I'm going to keep playing this game, I'm going to have to sit here and write out a whole bunch of notes in between my turns as we were playing asynchronously, uh, or I've got to play in real time in which game, in, in which case the game takes uh, quite a long time from what I understand. So I really do want to play this game more, but I need to dedicate a lot of brain power to actually figuring out what's going on and not, not just poking around and seeing what happens, which is a very bad thing to do strategically in an 18xx game, although I do find it interesting. So this is one that hopefully I'll be able to play more in the future. Maybe I'll try to dedicate some time to because I think it could be amazing. And I know a lot of people do think that 1817 is amazing and perhaps the best of, of all the 18xx games. I just haven't dedicated that time to it yet. So uh, we'll see. We'll see when I get there. Second game on the list is Argent the Consortium. Uh, I love Trey Chambers games. I really like Harvest. I really like Imperial. This, I believe, is his first game, uh, at least his first one published with Level 99, and I'm not 100% certain about it. So it's basically a worker placement game gone insane. So where a normal worker placement game, you typically have a static board. This game... It's all randomized. It's all variable. I believe the, the the actual worker placement locations can change. You get special powers. It's like if someone took a worker placement game and just threw the kitchen sink at it. And in my two plays, both I believe at two players, which I don't think is ideal, I did have a lot of fun with it. But I found myself sitting there thinking, I don't know if this is just a gimmick or if this actually makes for an interesting game. That kind of that level of like deep variability on just like the basic fundamentals of the game can be interesting, but it can also create an uneven experience over the long term. So I'm not 100% sure. I think it might be great. I think it might do enough to challenge uh, veteran players each time without being feeling arbitrary or frustrating, but I need to play that game a number more times to figure out if that's the case or if it's just kind of variability for its own sake as a kind of experiment. I'm not 100% sure yet. Uh, I do own this game, so uh, eventually I'll get it to the table more and figure that one out. The third game on this list is Combat Commander. I've played this once with Orion. It's a two-player World War II game by Chad Jensen, designer of one of my favorite games of all time, Dominant Species, and I greatly enjoyed my play. It is kind of a step up from something like Memoir 44. It's a little bit more complex, but still relatively accessible, I would say, solidly medium weight, where I'd say Memoir 44 is more of a medium light. And one thing that struck me when I was playing was that more than many of the kind of tactical level 
uh, war games I've played, which I'm not hugely experienced in, I felt like in Combat Commander I was actually making decisions that made real life sense, which is pretty wild given how abstract some of the mechanisms are. It's got this whole deck thing uh, that is extremely abstract and not you know, directly thematically in line with the kind of decision making that you'd be making on a tactical level in a war, but it translated very, very well. And I found myself thinking in terms of cover and supporting firepower and all these different things. And this was just the introductory scenario. So I think this could become my favorite tactical level war game. Um, I think that's the right terminology for it, or squad level. I don't, I, I dabble in war games. I don't know all of the terminology that well. I think it could become my favorite. I just got to schedule some time and find someone to play it with me and play through a few scenarios to see if that's the case. Uh, but I think it could be really great. Uh, Chad Jensen's a great designer, and I know a lot of people think this is his masterpiece. Um, and if it can be anywhere close as good as Dominant Species, I am completely on board. Uh, but I got to find someone to play it with. My fourth game, this is one I don't own, but uh, is... Uh, kind of a classic Euro game that got a reprint and kind of bigger version of it uh, a few years ago that I got to play is Container. And I was extremely impressed in my one play. It is kind of the definition of a interactive Euro. I don't know if that's the right term for it. Maybe an economic Euro. In other words, it takes a relatively simple rule set uh, and creates situations where the players are constantly at odds with each other, constantly rubbing up against each other. Everything that you do in the game influences everyone else. It's that kind of thing. It is the opposite of multiplayer solitaire in a Euro game. So in that sense, it's kind of old school. You see that a little bit more in kind of early millennium Euros from what I can tell, uh, which is, I think this is came out in 07, 08 maybe. Uh, but on occasion, while I do like all varieties of Euros, I like kind of the modern Baroque Euro. I, I also like these kinds of more old school economic or, or uh, friction Euros. I don't know what to call them. Uh, I like both. I think this style of Euro game has really, really high potential. And that's why I'm choosing container on this list, because if it truly can create situations where you are constantly making really, really tough decisions, and those decisions are set up by the actions of the other players almost exclusively, rather than by the mechanisms um, and kind of the structure of the game. It's, so it's not a puzzle so much against the game, but a puzzle uh, in conjunction with the other players and reacting to the other players, if it's truly a great style of that kind of game, or a great example of that kind of game, uh, then I think it could be one of my favorite games ever. I just got to play it more. And finally, this is probably the most obscure game on the list, uh, but it left an impression on me. It's Paramedics Clear uh, from about five years ago. I got to play it at a convention, and it is a real-time game, plays in about 30 minutes, and it greatly impressed me. Uh, usually real-time games, with a couple of exceptions, where there are truly, truly great ones like Space Alert, I play them, I'm like, yeah, that was fun, I like real-time games, it's got some fun stuff in there. Paramedics Clear, I recall thinking, wow, this could be one of my favorite real-time games of all time. It's been quite a while. I know I talked about it on a podcast. It was on one of the Granite Game Summit podcast uh, overviews from a few years ago. I don't remember a lot of the specifics about it, but I do remember th that specific thought that, wow, this could be one of my favorite real-time games and, and therefore one of my favorite games ever if I, if I played it more. And I should have just picked up a copy. I think there were some for sale. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, my, my memory from a few years ago isn't great. Uh, but looking through the list of games I've only played once, this one really stood out as a game that if I played more, could rise really high in my rankings uh, just because it did a lot of little things right from what I recall, um, and it didn't feel like, you know, a fine 
real-time game that you know had real-time elements you were doing pretty simple stuff there's a little bit of stress but it had i recall some twists and tweaks and mechanisms that put it a cut above uh, but i would need to play it more obviously to remember those things and to really analyze if it truly is in the top tier of real-time games so that's my list five super high upside games potentially uh, that i would really like to play more uh, please comment below with your games that you think have really high upside that you want to play more um, because the reason I made this list is because I think these are actually really interesting games to think about. Most games I play, honestly, my first play gives an almost complete understanding of how I'm going to enjoy the game over the long term. Now, that hasn't always been the case. There have been certain games where I've really grown to like them over time. Uh, believe it or not, first time I played Android Netrunner, I really didn't understand what was going on and didn't understand the appeal. It took me a few plays. My first play of innovation, I didn't like very much at all. Um, there was a time where I got really soured on Zulkin uh, and then returned to it a couple years later and, and remembered why I liked it so much initially. So that does happen, but I'd say 80 to 90% of the time, my first play uh, rating that I give uh, the game on Board Game Geek just to kind of remind myself of what I thought of it is within a half a star or a star of what I end up with after three, four, five plays, and I feel very confident in my evaluation of it. Uh, but these games, I think, could really, really rise. So, uh, and I think those, these games may that makes them a little bit more interesting than games where you play it and you're like, yeah, I feel like I've got the experience here. These are games where I played it and I like, I think I have the experience. I think I understand what's going on here. But there are some aspects to this that I need to investigate more. Anyways. List your t biggest upside games in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you can find everything I do at thethoughtfulgamer.com and you can support me at patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. Again, remember to hit subscribe so I can get up to 500 subscribers. That will put me on the path to 1,000, uh, which is kind of a big YouTube milestone. So uh, hopefully I can get there pretty soon. I'm gonna keep doing these weekly videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.